Hi, my name is Dave. I was born and raised an Oregonian, then I became a proud Pennsylvanian, and now I live abroad in Prague, Czech Republic. I grew up in a deeply conservative Christian home. I've been a registered Republican since I first voted at 18, and I used to be really proud of my party. As a teenager and young man, I admired George H.W. Bush for his character and spirit of service. I despised Bill Clinton for his slipperiness and immoral example. I love listening to Rush Limbaugh skewer the Clintons and the rest of the Democrats. I stood with George W. Bush as he lifted the nation after 9-11 and took the fight to the terrorists. I was really proud of my conservative values. The conservatism my parents taught me to embrace meant valuing personal responsibility, strong family values, and fiscally responsible governance. It meant protecting the Constitution, spreading democracy around the world, and standing strong against dictators. I still believe in all those things, but unfortunately, the Republican Party has largely abandoned them. Today's Republican leaders seem more interested in protecting their privilege and power and wealth than upholding the conservatism. They motivate their supporters with fear and misinformation instead of inspiring voters with their character and ideals. Republicans in the House like Devin Nunes, Jim Jordan, Matt Gates, they act like ignorant fools. Republicans in the Senate like Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell show no interest in legislating, and they seem determined to obstruct progress on any issue important to ordinary Americans. And then there's Trump. He's the absolute antithesis of all those conservative values I learned as a young man. Personal responsibility? How many times has he said he takes no responsibility for the COVID pandemic? And he has proudly claimed never to have asked forgiveness for anything, to God or to anyone else. What about strong family values? He's a compulsive liar, a name-calling bully. He had an affair with a porn star when his son was still a baby. He jokes about groping women. Fiscally responsible governance. He pushed through a huge tax cut for wealthy individuals and corporations with no plan to pay for it. And it has blown up our national debt. Protecting the Constitution. He's actively fought against congressional and judicial oversight of the executive branch. Spreading democracy. He shrinks in front of Putin. He writes love letters to Kim Jong-un while staying silent about the election farce in Belarus. Donald Trump is an absolute disgrace, and everyone around the world knows it. This November, we have a choice. I think most Americans agree it's not a great choice. There'll be two names on the ballot. Unfortunately, neither one is a conservative. But there is one candidate, and only one candidate, who's decent, honest, who will uphold the Constitution, who genuinely cares about the welfare of every American. We all know which candidate that is. Yes, Joe Biden is a Democrat, but he's a moderate. I've long observed that people don't easily change. Just like Trump didn't become presidential when he took office, Joe Biden won't become a radical leftist when he takes office, no matter how hard Trump and Fox News try to convince us he will. I know that many of my Christian friends and family members have continued to stand with Trump because his conservative judicial appointments and support for Israel they're willing to look past his character flaws in order to get policies enacted that they support. But I believe that when we elect a president, we're not just electing a party or a platform or an ideology. We're electing a person, a person who can lead us, who can protect us, who can unite us, who can inspire us to be better. Over the past four years, Donald Trump has proven time and again that he's both incapable and uninterested in doing any of those things. And if you still thought that Trump was fit to lead America, just look at his recent debate performance. He was a simple-minded schoolyard bully lashing out wildly in order to hide his own weaknesses and failings. It was yet another stunning failure of leadership and character. In 2016, there was no way I was going to vote for Trump, but I never did like Hillary. I hoped she would beat Trump, but living abroad makes voting a bit more challenging and I was too apathetic to climb the hurdle and cast my vote. This year, I'm definitely not going to make that same mistake. I requested my ballot early and changed my party affiliation to independent. I sent my ballot in last week. Let me say a big thank you to the election officials in Union County who have gone out of their way to answer my questions and clearly explain what I need to do to make sure my vote is counted. 
They really do want to help everyone vote who wants to. But with COVID still spreading and Trump's administration undermining election officials and even the post office, all Americans will face extra hurdles to cast their vote. To my family members and friends who've continued to stand by Trump, and indeed to all Americans at home and abroad, I plead with you to overcome any apathy you feel, to climb every hurdle you face, and to join me in casting your vote for Joe Biden. A vote for Joe is a vote to reject hate, to reject division, to reject narcissism, to reject ignorance. A vote for Joe is a vote to restore empathy, to restore decency, to restore competence and to restore democracy. Vote like the future of this country and indeed conservatism depends on it. Voting for Joe Biden is the only way to save America and conservatism from the cancer of Trumpism. Thank you for listening. Take care and God bless.